Hi everyone, my name is Haydalyn Laco, and I have been living in Boston for roughly about a year and I want to share with you the seven most uh, commonly asked questions or concerns about moving to Boston. So with that, let's get started. Is Boston safe? Short answer, yes it is. It obviously like don't keep your guards down, but relatively, you know, as a young woman, you know, brown woman, you know, if you haven't noticed, I am, I am brown. Uh, I, I'm not one to really like go out like at night just because I'm more of an early riser type of person. But on the very rare occasions that when I do go out, um, I feel relatively safe like walking home alone. Obviously, it depends like where you're at, what you're doing, and you'll figure out more about that uh, the more that you live here in Boston. But I've been pretty all right so far. Obviously, I don't let my guards down. The one thing to note is um, the T is, it's not like a 24 seven type of service. The amount of trains available after midnight just kind of like plummets down. So you need to probably take a ride share more after midnight if you're not like doing it like on a, like on the peak hours just to be safe, just because yeah, you just don't want to be at the train station by yourself even though it's even though it's relatively safe you just don't want to be at the train station by yourself i think there's just been a lot of very negative stereotypes in terms of boston safety but again those are just um stereotypes and you know there are the rare occasions where like things happen but that doesn't mean it's a relatively bad city but overall in terms of safety i've been feeling pretty comfortable in terms of my safety Let's talk about the personalities of people who live in Boston slash New England slash just East Coast in general. I remember when I first moved to Boston, people were kind of warning me, oh, people can kind of come off as like a bit like rude or like standoffish. And I want to go into like a little bit more detail on what exactly like that persona exactly means. I would say people in Boston are a little bit more on the introvert side. Um, I like it. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like that where like your commute say you're commuting and you're just like in tunnel vision you know you're just here to like just be on for the ride just go in get out you know that's all you care about while in california where i'm from you know people actually like try and make a random conversation with you that's a little bit more extroverted not to say that overall boston is like rude or standoffish it's just a different culture you know it's just a different it's just a different vibe i think especially People who've been in Boston long enough to develop like the strong, the really strong Boston accent. You know, the accent is like very low and it can sound a bit harsh to people. So I can understand why people kind of get this like perception that people in Boston are like standoffish or rude or maybe just because we're nearby New York and New York has that stereotype as well. There's a few oddballs like here and there, you know, like some rude people or whatever. But that's gonna happen wherever you go. Overall, my perception of like Boston and its people, it's very good people. As long as you get the co uh, confidence to, you know, just strike up a, a conversation, or if one of you guys get the confidence, I would say overall to just strike up a, a conversation. Now, let's talk about overall diversity in Boston. I would say Boston is a pretty diverse place, especially like for on the East Coast. I think New York would probably top the most diverse the most diverse place are there more improvements that can be made obviously you know the good thing is it's relatively diverse especially when you're hitting like the college and academic institutions like bu mit harvard boston college etc etc in fact alston has a lot of really good food that i need to explore a lot of more asian food that i need to explore over there and i will do so over time and share that with you is boston overall pretty white yeah yeah it's a it's got really strong roots makes sense with um the history that is behind boston which i'll talk about in a bit at least in terms for white people it's very irish and very italian which kind of makes sense um again with Boston's history. If I ever feel uncomfortable, 
I would say like I note it more, but I don't feel uncomfortable just because like in my field, so I work in the legal field, I'm unfortunately really used to being the only Filipino face, the only like brown person whenever I enter somewhere. So I've kind of had a lot of practice uh, being used to it. But if again, you're brand new to the situation, um, yeah, that's something that could happen. I would say if but overall, like everyone's nice and everyone's like, I haven't had like any problems so far in terms of adjusting, but it is an adjustment, especially if you're coming from California. This is for, this is a PSA for my fellow Pinoys. We are a rare species out here, let me tell y'all. And I remember reading on a report uh, published by UMass Boston that back in 2000 there was only what a few thousand of us out here it hasn't updated yet but based on living here in boston for about a year i would say yeah we're still in the low thousands range there is a filipino grocery store called uh Sherpanoi. it is in quincy in fact that's pretty much where the two main filipino places are um they're down in quincy so if you Go from the uh, main part of Boston, you take the red line, you can go straight down to Quincy. You might have to take a bus to transfer if you're just doing all public transit, but you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. So Sherpanoi, it's very small, it's very cute, but it does have a lot of the um, main groceries that would be needed. They have the, they even have a Walis. I saw the Walises be on sale there. Now there is no Jollibee, however, however, um, I saw like in the refrigerator part of the store that they were selling like the peach mango pie and just the Jollibee gravy, which I thought was really funny. Um, there's a lot of the main like pastries. Uh, they usually uh, get it from New Jersey and have it shipped in like every Friday and Saturday. I only know this because I watched one of the, I believe like there was someone who is a family member uh, um, for that store and um, I'll put the link up here um, or in the description below and they just kind of describe like how often like their their uh, products come in and so uh, what she told me is that every Friday mostly Fridays and Saturdays uh, is the best time to get the uh, probably like the pastries and stuff down there just because they get it from New Jersey which is the main closest i guess uh spot for filipino stuff right next to the sherpanoi mart there is a, a restaurant called bright light it is a filipino jamaican blended restaurant where it's um the way it's set up it's kind of small and it's like the the point point uh i forgot i forgot what that's called in tagalog the food is pretty good i remember i met the Tita, who was cooking in the back, uh, she made, oh, she made real fresh lechon. She gave me the, like, the, the sauce for it. It was real good. It was real, it was real good. Overall, getting Filipino food, whether it be from the Sherpanoi Mart or the uh, Bright Light uh, restaurant, it can be a little bit more pricier than what you're used to. I know I'm from San Diego and I'm used to like over at Tita's, uh, the, restaurant, the restaurant called Tita's, where you can get like a big big box of food uh just like plastic wrapped all over of course for about 20 bucks and that can feed you for about a couple of days here it can be a bit pricier because again there's not a lot of us out here and if you have to have shipments you know sent in from new jersey it, it kind of makes sense but definitely support the local peoples now let's talk about education you got harvard mit bu boston college umass boston I think Leslie University, Suffolk University, there's probably a couple more that I'm missing. But I think the main idea you should get is that there are a lot of very well respectable academic institutions here in Boston. So in terms of the education department, you will not be lacking when moving out here. In fact, if anything, like, people in Boston are very well educated and you can understand why considering there's so many schools. And the best part about all these schools is that there is easier access to public transportation like BU last time I went over there there was like two three stops 
just all along on the green line just for BU itself. You know, um, for Harvard, MIT, they have their own red line stops. Boston College, I know like that's the end of a green line. Suffolk University, it's like right nearby uh, Park Street. But overall, like there's a lot of really good academic institutions. So you really can't go wrong um, going to school out here in Boston. Now let's talk about rent. Rent is expensive and it's just increasing. So I want you to, to know that. The lowest I've seen an apartment, at least like a studio, if you're choosing to live on your own, I think the lowest ranges that like I usually see it for, like within the main Boston area, close to probably more in the Alston region, um, I would say probably the lowest I've seen, maybe like 1500, 1600. And then the highest, I don't, don't want to go there. It's too high. It's too expensive. Um, but yeah, living in Boston is not cheap at all. And I need you all to be very aware of that before you move out here because rent is just skyrocketing. I came out here. I was very lucky during an unlucky situation, which is the pandemic. During the peak of COVID, it's when I moved out here in December 2020. And prices were pretty much slashed in half and so because of that I took advantage of the deals that were going on and you know since I just had to renew my lease they still honored what the price was and only like increased it a little bit even though it increased a little bit it's still expensive like understanding my salary is real expensive another thing to note about the price of living is just moving out here a lot of places just expect you to like just fork up a month's worth of rent for broker fees i've never understood like why how using a broker is so common out here in boston like considering you're the one who found the apartment and you have to pay someone like for that so i don't know and a month's extra month's worth so of rent so that that's the part that frustrates me of why it's so ex why a partial reason of why it's so expensive another really cool thing to note is that there's such a very rich history and culture in boston as you may all be very well aware boston has a very strong roots in the starings of america in the beginnings of american history which makes sense even walking around, you can tell it's very, the styles are still very Eurocentric, um, especially if you stay more to like the main parts of Boston, like Beacon Hill, um, even North End, you know, there's still a lot of those really strong roots. I know for me, like whenever I'm going to work, it's, I pass by the Boston um, Tea Party site, which is insane because I, I remember learning this, you know, when I was a kid and I was thinking, oh, that's a far away in terms of like time and place and i pass by it like all the time on my way to work so i think that's really cool so if you do not want to spend money going to europe you know there's a there's a cheaper version you know kind of like a a little cheaper version uh in boston so that that's a that's a fun thing to keep in mind you know <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this really helps for if you're moving to Boston or you're planning on moving to Boston anytime soon. If you want to know more or see more Boston related content, check out my uh, Boston Living playlist. I think it's probably gonna be on the side of me, but yeah, probably more. it's probably like on the side of me. Let me know in the comments if there is more Boston related content that you you as a viewer would like to see. And I hope I can address that in future videos. Uh, but overall, I wish you all a very good day. I will see you all next time.